Mamie Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, a new report by the American Cancer Society shows that African Americans are still more likely than any other group to develop and die of cancer. The study states that the socioeconomic factors play the largest role in this disparity. African Americans have less access to health care and information and are less likely to get screening and medical treatment. Well, a new book offers one answer into why black Americans deeply mistrust American medicine. Medical apartheid, the dark history of medical experimentation on black Americans from colonial times to the present, is the first and only comprehensive history of medical experimentation, abuse, and neglect of African Americans. The book reveals the hidden underbelly of scientific research and the roots of the African American health deficit. It begins with the earliest encounters of blacks in the medical establishment during slavery, looks at how eugenics and social Darwinism was used to, were used to justify medical experiments conducted by the government and the military, and offers new details about the infamous Tuskegee experiments that began in the 1930s. Medical apartheid also examines less well-known abuses and looks at unethical practices and mistreatment of African Americans that are still taking place in the medical establishment today. We're joined now by the author of the book, Harriet Washington, a medical writer and editor, a visiting scholar at DePaul University School of Law. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Well, this is a fascinating book. Uh, first of all, why did you take it on? I took it on for two reasons. One, I'm a very naturally curious person, and when I was still in pre-medical undergraduate at the University of Rochester, I was working in a hospital and came across some case files. Biologically. And this provided a rationale and an underpinning not only for the institution of slavery. Slavery probably could not have persisted if there hadn't been this medical underpinning, but also for the use of blacks in research. For example, it said that blacks were less intelligent, subhuman, perhaps not even quite human, that they didn't experience pain, that they were immune to diseases like malaria and heat sickness that made it impossible for whites to work in the field, but made them perfect for labor in the field. So this set of beliefs, this set of scientific beliefs, was not buttressed by any real data, but only by the needs of the community. And this actually gave um, permission for doctors to acquire slaves to, for research they also had a variety of conditions for which um, a good example is reproductive health. All of the early important reproductive health advances were um, devised by perfecting um, experiments on black women. Why? Because white women could say no. White women were not interested in having doctors looking at their genitalia during the Victorian era, and white women were not interested in undergoing painful surgery without anesthesia, but black women could not say no. 
So this animus um, began, as you say, in the very early days of our republic, and it simply snowballed until by the time of the Civil War, blacks were being used almost exclusively in some venues and in very high proportion in others for everything, uh, vaccine design, experimental surgeries, and they were never consensual. You never asked their permission, and, rare, and rarely were they therapeutic. They were mostly to get to expand medical Now.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're talking to Harriet Washington, who's written a quite remarkable co book called Medical Apartheid. Uh, she's a medical writer and editor, visiting scholar at DePaul University School of Law, previously a fellow in medical ethics at Harvard Medical School, wrote for USA Today, and also was a Knight Fellow at Stanford University. Juan? Yeah, before we go come up to modern times, I'd like to get back to the to the slavery period. And uh, in your book, you talk about some you document specific examples of some of the doctors who were involved in these ghoulish experiments. So you you mentioned uh, Dr. James Marion Sims and Dr. Walter F. Jones. Can you talk about some of the things that they practiced uh, on slaves in those days? Right, James Marion Sims was a very important surgeon from Alabama, and his all of his medical experimentation took place with slaves. Um, he took the skulls of young children, young black children, only black children, and um, he opened their heads and moved around the bones of the skull to see what would happen. Posited as a cure for disease, but there was no rationale for that. He also decided to remove the jawbone of a slave, but this slave was pretty intractable. He did not want the surgery. He loudly protested against it, and in response, Dr.